Good morning. Good morning. Oh, lovely. Don't always get that kind of response. Bit of trivia. This is the first church, not not today, but uh, the first time back in 2018, which feels like a lifetime ago. I know I'm probably not alone in that. Before I began my career in religious education, which happened a couple of weeks after, actually. For any of you who remember that first outing, I promise I've had some practice in coaching. Our theme for the month of October is courage. And I know that theme isn't always obvious in our worship, partly because we have so many outsiders that we bring in and, you know, they they get to say what's on their hearts, what they want us to hear. It's not always about our theme. But I'm not exactly an outsider and I really like the theme, so I'm going to lean into it. But I can't explore courage without first talking a little bit about fear. Fear is a reaction. There's all kinds of fear, but they mostly come on pretty suddenly, like when you're surprised. Fear can simply be what we feel when we don't know what's happening. But whatever's happening feels dangerous. Fear's a protective emotion. It has a purpose. It's there to force us to assess risk. Fear is often rooted in what we don't know. We're afraid because the future is uncertain, and even when the likely outcome is positive, we can still be afraid. Any change, if it's big enough, can cause fear simply because of the uncertainty. In fact, the biggest fear most people have is the biggest uncertainty humans face. Today I stand before you in my fifth year as a religious education professional and as your director of Lifespan Religious Education. And I am so proud (laughs) that you all have granted me that title. I'm going to choke up several times. Just bear with me. Let me tell you that I was intimidated and nervous about even applying here to this congregation with a history of professional RE leadership. There was fear about coming here and following in the footsteps of people I look up to. And some days there still is. But today, I can honestly tell you, I'm scared to be standing here in front of all of you and the whole internet. (laughs) It's hard to get up and read my own words. I can act. But it's hard to get up here and tell you what I think you need to hear coming from my own mouth. And I don't know how it's going to land, but here we go. Mark Twain is credited as being the first person to record the thought that courage is not the absence of fear, but the ability to face it. Franklin Delano Roosevelt is credited with my favorite version of the quote, but I can't actually source it, so... Courage is not the absence of fear, but rather the assessment that something else is more important than fear. I was scared. But following the advice of fictional general and space mom, Carrie Fisher, who would have turned 66 on Friday, I did it anyway. (sighs) Space mom. Definitely going to choke on this one. See, she was asked once in an interview, what advice do you give to people who are struggling with mental illness and are afraid to pursue their dreams? Carrie, and I'm sure she'd be okay with me calling her that. Carrie said, stay afraid, but do it anyway. What's important is the action. If you didn't have to overcome fear, oh, I'm skipped ahead, I'm sorry. What's important is the action. Don't wait to have, don't wait to be confident. Just do it and eventually confidence will follow. Fear is a reaction, but courage is a choice. In fact, I've often said that no one is really brave unless there was something to be afraid of. If you didn't have to overcome fear, it wasn't courage that motivated you. You become brave when you act, not without fear, but in spite of it. Do it anyway. Confidence will follow. A more inspiring version, I think, of fake it till you make it. Or maybe a slightly more inspirational way of saying practice makes perfect. Either way, I think it's a great point. Fear is natural, and it's there to force us to evaluate the risk. It's a defense. It's there ultimately to keep us alive. But 
Too often, fear keeps us from living, from doing the things that will ultimately make our lives meaningful. And I'm absolutely guilty of regularly giving more weight to fear than I ought to and missing out on things I wish I'd done. I'm not here because I am a shining example. I'm definitely as much a cautionary tale as most any of you. But I'm pushing myself more in the last few years. I'm choosing hope more often. And I'm acting on that hope. And the results are largely positive, even if the process is sometimes terrifying. Like Carrie also said, what's important is the action. No one can know what's going on in my head. I can't know your intentions or your emotional state. What we can judge and what we are judged by are our actions and our reactions. It's honestly much less important to me why you're here. I mean, maybe you like the music or maybe you think we have the best coffee. If you're a positive influence on the church, then I'm thrilled that you're a part of community. And if being here is scary for you, either because it involves a crowd or because sometimes it gets loud or because maybe you have strong feelings about church in a general sense, if being here is scary and you still come and do your bit of good for the church, then you're brave and you deserve to know it. And I'm proud of you and grateful that you're here. Your actions matter and it matters that they have a positive impact. And that's true of the church, this organization. In a sense, the church is its own entity, and we are its collective body. Now, I know that starts to sound very, very churchy, but bear with me. Because this is true of pretty much any situation where a relationship or set of relationships creates a structure. Families, small businesses, fraternal organizations, and churches alike. Our hands are its hands doing good in Plano. And when we care for one another, that's the church caring for itself. Our individual brains are almost like the cells of the brain of community, working together to make choices. The church is an entity, and we are collectively its hands and its feet and its brain. And when we show up to work days, that's the church cleaning itself. When we come to services, that's the church celebrating itself and its place in the world. When a group of us shows up at God's pantry, the church is doing community service. Whenever we work for the mission of Community Unitarian Universalist Church, that's the church having an impact on the world. And when we're welcoming, when we make people glad that they've come, the church is welcoming and has a chance to grow. And growth if it happens, requires change as we make room for new members to add their skills and their time and their interest and their needs to the body of the church. And change can be scary. Drawing a wider circle is a risk. It means not just letting people in, but actively trying to include them, even when they aren't our people. They might, they might not even want to be included, but we have to make space for them and invite them in even when they wouldn't do the same for us. When we feed the hungry, we show up at pride, or we say black lives matter. Anytime we lift up the worth and dignity of the marginalized, we're drawing a wider circle of inclusion, and the church is siding with love against fear and hate. And that mission for which you have all said this church exists, to make our world a more compassionate, just, and respectful place, That kind of attention, sadly, isn't always going to get a unanimously positive response from the people around us. When we're scared, the church is scared. And when we're brave, the church is brave. Being this church in this time, in this state, is a brave choice. One that each of you makes and remakes over and over again, individually and as a congregation. I picked Fire of Commitment today as a hymn because I wanted you all to sing about what it means to live into that mission before I started the sermon. I wanted you to feel good about being brave. I wanted you to see that measure of hope against fear. 
We have to really think about what our possibilities are and our priorities, and not just the bad, but also the good, even beyond our expectations. And so I wanted you to, pe- I wanted you to picture that. I wanted you to see the world with that beacon, bright and clear, guiding hearts and hands and spirit to a faith set free from fear. Well, not free, but also not bound up in it. Be afraid, but do it anyway. So let's draw the circle wider still and be that beacon. We welcome new members, even when it means facing change and uncertainty. Let's be active in the community, not just as distant donors, but as an active presence in the lives of the people who've been disadvantaged. Let's do our good and allow our song, both brave and free, to call to pilgrims seeking truth and meaning in their lives. Community is a church positioned to do amazing things in this uncertain time. We have a campus right around the corner. We have a location pretty easy to see, easy to reach. We have a building that's bigger than we need right now. And we've got a plot of land we're really unlikely to outgrow. We are people with passion and concern and knowledge and the ability to organize. And if we're bold, I think we could have a huge impact in Collin County over the next 10 years. And if we're inspiring, I think we could grow 25% in just a few. If we choose to be brave, we can be the church we were founded to be. But that means facing fear. Fear of change, fear of scarcity, fear of burning out the people who've been keeping things running. And the fear of change is a fear of growth. The fear of scarcity is a fear of investment. The fear of burnout is the fear that things won't be the way they've always been and that we have to allow new systems to replace them. And that's true. We have to allow it. And we will. And it's all going to be scary. I feel it, and I'm here to honor it. Fear is a protective emotion. Fear is very often rooted in love. But you really can love something too much. And when you hold it too tight, you can love something to death. I'm going to go off script for just a second. I painted my nails. I have a long history of biting my nails. And I'm trying to stop. So I thought if I paint my nails, that'd be way less incentive, right? They look terrible. I've never done it before. Part of facing fear and doing new things is understanding you're probably going to be terrible at it. That's part of being afraid. Let me tell you, for me anyway, knowing I'm going to be bad at something is terrifying. (laughs) Do it anyway. I told you I was scared to stand here this morning and deliver this message. This is where I work, doing something I love and I think is important. And I'm here telling all of you to do hard, scary things. And I hope that you'll hear it and give it the consideration you would if my day job were professor or political organizer. I'm here today as a professional with an important message for this church. Stay scared, but do it anyway. Don't be reckless, don't be careless but recognize that the church needs some change in how things are done to reflect the current resources, both economic and human. Invest in programs and outreach that both fulfill the mission of the church and inspire people to want to participate. Do accept that change is coming, and all we can do is decide if we're going to embrace it and work to make it positive, or just wait until it happens. It's scary to do bold things to welcome new people who might have different ideas about how the church fulfills its mission or how we worship. It's scary to take risks that impact the people around us in ways that matter. And fear is important in making sure that we assess that risk wisely. And it's okay. Stay afraid. But the mission is not to exist as a church. The mission is to make the world more compassionate and just and respectful. That takes risk, and I'm asking you to do it anyway. Be a bold community that reaches out, that invests in its goals, in its hopes, 
Be a church that answers the call of love even when it feels risky. The community garden was a risk. Share the plate is a risk. Flying the pride flag at the front door is an act of bravery in this time, in this place. But let's do more. Let's not rest on the success of yesterday. There are things that when we assess them through the lens of our principles and our mission have to be more important than the fear. There's work to be done, and the planning, the funding, the organizing, each of those in turn is going to be scary. Stay afraid, say it with me, but do it anyway. Have hope, have courage, be brave.